Ah yes, Asmirano Martica Dystanicul Dakar, the namesake card of the food archetype in modern, but even with the power of the Underworld Cookbook at my opponent's side, you might find that this game's culinary experience is tailored to a little bit of seafood. With an opening appetizer of Hedron Crab, a main course in the Ruin variety, and a little sprinkling of Tasha's hideous laughter for dessert, I hope you enjoy your stay in the kitchens of Modern Mill. Now starting this game off, this hand is insane. The double crab, the two lands, fatal push. It is the makings of something good. I just need to draw a third land to stop whatever my opponent is doing. Because at this point, I don't know what's going on with the blood found, but I do see the Asmo finally hit the yard and I see Saltai food. So they get an Urza Saga out and little do I know they're going to get a little aggressive. And I do miss a land drop here, which isn't great. So I'm going to try and e end of turn Fractured Sanity here. They get the Saga token out and do nothing, which is great. I do manage to find a land that is tapped which is why i don't like playing Sheldock isle in any of my mill decks i do get some triggers i do end up putting a spell pierce underneath it and you know what not bad i pass the turn with a spell pierce and a fatal push up so at the end of the day i am doing fun things but the construct token is going to come out and well they're going to get aggressive into the board so i have to keep that fatal push close to my chest they are going to create another one which is not bad and they're going to create another there's a saga coming down and I'm going to counter this underworld cookbook. There's no need for them getting all this value from the oval chase daredevil in their yard. I'm going to fatal push the construct token that can attack and just hopefully I can get something going next turn. Now they pass the turn on my turn. I get the polluted delta and I just kind of pass through. I think my biggest concern is I haven't played against this archetype in a while, so I don't want to just Tasha's and just go. I feel like they might get something going with a time sieve and an asmo. So I, I don't really want to go weapons down just yet. So I stay reactive. I managed to kill the construct token while they're tapped out. Go back to my turn. I keep milling them. I play my fracture sandy. They go to zero and hey, that's how easy it is to wrap them up. Going into game two, I actually did bring in all of my graveyard hate, including the Soul Guy Lanterns, inspecting endurance. But spoiler alert, they don't have any. So they start things off with the Gilded Goose. I have my archive traps and triple crap and I'm just laughing all the way to the bank. This is an amazing hand, especially with the extra bait. Now they do have the big boon in the goose and they are, you know, spoiler alert, going to get an Asmo out pretty quick. So this is not looking good for a creature heavy hand. So unfortunately, I don't get the value out of the Hedron crab, but that's why you play that one out first. It is the weaker out of the bunch. I get my archive trap value from their search for the cookbook. I play my next ring crab, just get a little bit more mill. I am looking for oval chase daredevils, uh, which I managed to find eventually because now the top this is going to be pretty insane if I find it. So at this point, I'm hoping to just mitigate the game, maybe just mill them out with another archive trap trigger, whatever it might be, and then, you know, play my rune crab and mill them out. But this game ends up being really, really damn close. So I'll still let you see how it plans out. They attack in with the 3 3, and it's a really good body. Now I go for the field of ruin on the Urza saga because I don't want them speeding up their clock. I'm going to have them hold it a little close and have them draw into whatever they need and unfortunately we don't draw too well we play our ruin crab we get our field of ruin trigger and i'm forgetting completely that of course that that activated ability on the deal six is well instant speed and they have the ability to do it especially with the academy manufacturer out now that's the tricky place that we're in i don't get the complete value i want out of ruin crab so maybe i should have waited but who knows right now at this point they're going to be creating a bunch a bunch of tokens and my big fear is the time sieve that they may or may not find unfortunately they're not low enough in cards in library where if they do time sieve they might just draw themselves out so at this point they're going to play the time sieve I'm not working out the math in my head here. I don't think they exactly have it. I think they're a turn off, but I could be wrong here. Regardless, they find the unearth, find the Asmo, and I say, you know what? Game's over. I got to call it here. Final game of the series here. I bring back in some other key cards. I take out the Soul Guides Lanterns. If you're not going to play Endurance, I don't care about the graveyard. I just need to hit key pieces. Now, again, triple crab hand we're hitting them with the seafood experience and especially with the fractured sandy we're going to get a little aggressive right i don't need the interaction if i can race them so that's what's key here i get my polluted delta triggers i kill that asmo because i don't need them rushing any of that out i'm not really that hasty for a fractured sanity trigger now things do get a little tricky in this game 
but I'll let you see how that eventually pans out. I play the Toshas. I'm hoping to mill actually a couple more. I was hoping to get maybe a, them down to 16, 15 or so, but oh well, 18 is fine. And if I can find another land, the Jace is going to be great. So they're going off. They're creating a bunch of tokens. They got the Academy Manufacturer, and those Underworld Cookbooks are putting in overtime. So I'm going to hard cast a Fracture Sandy and keep them low. And here's the key. Because they played the Manufacturer, I figured they would play the Time Sieve. And guess what, folks? Time Sieve gives you extra turns, but those extra turns, you are drawing a card every single turn. So at two cards in the library, they play that, and I think they realize that dealing one damage a turn with a Academy Manufacturer is not going to do anything for them. GG's.